Love it or hate it, the metaverse is here to stay. Today, we are going to break down the top metaverse projects that you should potentially be looking into because the fact of the matter is the metaverse is going to impact 100% of people's lives over the next handful of years. Now, decentralized is vital. Privacy is vital. Encryption, well, you see, when you look at the blockchain, there's a few things you need to know. What metaverse projects should you avoid like the plague? What metaverse projects are potentially scams? What metaverse projects are worth looking into and maybe worth investing in? Well, this is going to be speculation and my opinion. Let me know down below if you agree or there's some other projects you think I missed on this list. Let's go ahead and get into Operation Meta. Now, unfortunately, a truly private and anonymous metaverse doesn't currently exist, but being able to buy the tokens on places like KuCoin or places like Gate, utilizing BISC and some of these other decentralized peer-to-peer -peer exchanges is very valuable. If you haven't already, check out my exchanges video so you know where to buy these without getting tracked. I will link it up in the cards or down below. But you guys can check out what exchanges I recommend. Now we're gonna talk about the metaverse as a whole. First one I wanna discuss is High Street. High Street is play to earn. Now, here's the thing. Metaverse has a lot of different things. You got land, you got NFTs, you've got the play to earn. Some of them got staking. There's so many directions that these are going. And metaverses are coming at you left and right. And people are like, what's the right one? Well, this is the very early days, kind of like in the early days of social media. You had Friendster, you had MySpace, you had Facebook, Instagram came, Meerkat came, Periscope came, Twitter came, you know, YouTube came, Vine came. There's so many of these companies. Some lasted, some didn't. And there were thousands of social media platforms that didn't make it. We could sit here all day and name them, but that's a waste of time. That is a thing of the past. This is Web 3.0, not 2.0. So High Street is half digital and half physical. They're trying to bring your existence into the product game and have you become part of this game. Now, I've looked into High Street. I've looked how it's structured. I've looked the way that it's coming together. Personally, not a big fan. I'm going to go ahead and rate High Street as a D. I don't see a lot of things built in for the people, it's mostly built in for the game. Maybe it could get better over time, but right now I'm going to say High Street is definitely a D at best. And my problem with a lot of these games and my problem with the way they're structuring this is this is no longer low stakes like playing a video game. You're putting yourself, you're putting your digital footprint, which becomes your physical reality, into the metaverse. The metaverse is going to be a very bad thing for a lot of people. And you don't want to just go out willy-nilly in the early days and start putting all your information and all your data on the metaverse. The next one we're going to talk about is Cube. Are you familiar with Cube NFT 3D avatars and seamless asset transfer? You want to turn all of your objects, your assets, your physical things into an NFT? Well, a lot of these metaverse projects are allowing you to do that, which is the worst thing possible. Now, obviously, a lot of these companies are owned by government agencies, and a lot of these tokens are being taken over by government agencies. This is going to be Overwatch and Big Brother 10.0, because what they have the ability to do is buy up these tokens and then help shift where these projects are going, which they've already on record done to a lot of cryptos. That's why crypto is leaving the decentralized, privacy-based, blockchain-based, open and free ecosystem that it was supposed to be, and it is going into a government-controlled, centralized system. And that is the problem, and the bait and switch is currently happening in the crypto space, so you really need to be careful. Cube, I'm also going to give a D. I don't like their structure. I don't trust what they're trying to do, and I'm I, there's a couple decent features if we want to be fair, so they're not quite an F, but I'm going to go ahead and give them a D. Bit rent, decentralized real estate. Now, they've got a billion tokens and BitRent has actually been partnering and bought up with a bunch of real estate terms, 
And what they want to do is <laughs> they want to try to take over real real estate into the metaverse. Now, this is part of Agenda 30. You will own nothing and love it. And you really got to watch out for some of these things. BitRent is garbage. And I'm going to go ahead and, and with BitRent, I'm going to say F, absolute F. This is not something that I recommend. We need to keep the metaverse and the real world as separate as possible. And then the metaverse needs to be decentralized, open, and free. The problem with all these centralized things is then you go back to governing bodies who have control and could boot you out. And when you put your stuff in there, you're allowing organizations to be able to see everything you own, everything you do, everything you say, and they can turn around and use this against you. And also they can push a button and wipe you out of the metaverse. This is the problem with centralization. And again, I state unequivocally, this is not what crypto was supposed to be, but there's not enough people making noise about this, which is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Crypto is going to be destroyed in the next couple of years if activists don't start getting out there and protesting. The government just had a meeting about the future of crypto. Now we've got a situation where the government is starting to decide your future and you're not even part of the conversation and it's happening worldwide. Now, in some countries like China and India, they're just like, no, you can't participate, which is insane. And other countries like Australia and Canada and the United States and most countries in Europe, they're getting ready to implement some serious laws that are going to affect your ability to participate in this. And they've already said the future of banking is centralized, which it shouldn't be. It should be decentralized. Axis Affinity is a very popular choice, and it's got a lot of promise. Again, I have some of the similar concerns. But with them, they have strong backing and strong reasons not to not to do an about face like a few of these other ones. I have my concerns with this particular project, but that kind of warrants its own separate video. As far as stability, as far as investment, you've seen substantial growth. I'm going to go ahead and give them a B. The thing is, looking at building the future of the blockchain and the future of these blockchain ecosystems. So now we have competitors. Of course, for a long time, people saw Bitcoin as the core property and they saw Ethereum as the core blockchain tool. That's why a lot of coins, especially a lot of altcoins, utilize Ethereum. But for a long time, people talked about high gas fees, high issues. And I've invested in most of these. I've played around and researched most of these. I know people who are involved in most of these that I'm, that I'm talking about here. And then you start having other ones like, of course, Solana and other blockchains coming out. You, you see the rise of smart contracts. You see the rise of the restructuring of some of this stuff, which is really good. You look at how crypto is trying to get involved in payment processing and banking. So Access Affinity, I'm going to go ahead and give a B. They're trying to really get involved with companies who are getting involved in the metaverse. So famously, companies like Alibaba are trying to get in the metaverse, companies like uh, most activewear and sports brands are getting in the meta metaverse. Uh, a couple of companies like Nike just bought a shoe company that makes metaverse shoes. You could buy metaverse yachts. Of course, you could popular buy metaverse clothing, metaverse things. So it's, it's becoming Sims for people who want to spend money on NFT objects that they possess in the metaverse. And now you're able to port your actual physical objects into the metaverse. So... We're going to go ahead and give that a B. Now we're going to talk about Star Atlas. Star Atlas is going to be a dual token. And the problem with a dual token is, well, it's confusing, right? It's, it's absolutely confusing. And so a lot of, you know, Solana-powered platforms are gaining a lot of popularity because the explosion of Solana. But... You know, when you have a dual token, a lot of people get confused, a lot of investors, a lot of people trying to utilize it. The one thing that's really popular on it is the staking. Staking, of course, has become really popular. Recently in the United States, Elizabeth Warren has attacked DeFi. She wants to shut down DeFi. Now, a lot of you might say, well, that's not possible. <laughs> Keep in mind, guys, it's always possible because they don't, it's not about controlling crypto or controlling the actual website. It's about controlling the people. If they come out and say DeFi is illegal, are you going to commit a felony to do DeFi? Well, you go to jail. So 
This is the problem. So staking is blowing up in the metaverse, but the problem is simultaneously we have the government going after staking. They want to shut down staking. If the government shuts down the ability to do anything in crypto, it, the first thing it will be will be DeFi. DeFi is the biggest target because it is the biggest threat to the banking industry. Way bigger threat than things like XRP or Cardano or some of these other ones. Way bigger threat than these payment processors. Those are definitely going to exist. Crypto tokens that help process and, and you know, utilize for payment structures will exist. But when we're looking at the metaverse, bringing these projects together, that's going to be the problem. So Star Atlas is popular for the staking side, the Solano side. I'm going to go ahead and give it a C. If it, was, if it wasn't for the dual token, it would probably get a B, but there's still some issues and some problems there. Next one is Ultra. Ultra is an entertainment platform, and in my opinion, it sucks. It is not worth using. I don't like the direction they're going, and I'm absolutely going to give it an F. Ultra sucks. Yeah, I just, I've, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm absolutely not a fan. I've talked to a few people who have some early knowledge of the platform and the way things are going, and you look at these entertainment platforms, and you look at the way they're structuring for identification you look at the way they're structuring for facial recognition and you know metadata and bringing real world data into this metaverse which is not a thing i mean realistically you should have a, a false avatar you should have an avatar of yourself that is completely anonymous and false you should not be bringing your real information in there so absolute f the next one is meta oh you know meta it used to be called Facebook by Mark Zucker Billions. Now, he famously failed at crypto not once but twice. And then he thought, you know what? Hold my beer. I am going to take over the entire metaverse. And the crazy thing is, and I've talked to a lot of people about this. If I ask 10 people what the metaverse is, I bet you six to seven of them will say, oh, isn't that what Facebook changed into? It's shocking how many. Well, let's be let's be real. There's a lot of polls out that say roughly 20% of people invest in crypto. So that's still pretty small. Out of those 20 people, probably 70 to 80% got on board based on what happened in the world 2020, 2021. A lot of people were jumping on the hype train, the FOMO, et cetera. And then with the government handing out money last year, a lot of people got into crypto. As soon as the government stimulus has stopped, that exact day, and I called it in one of my videos, that exact day, you saw crypto suppress the entire industry because people had to start paying their bills their own money, and they couldn't just keep injecting government-funded money in crypto. But the, the stimulus packages helped crypto a lot. Well, Meta came along, and they decided, we're going to take over the metaverse. And you guys have all probably seen that creepy video with Mark Zuckerberg where you're going to take Oculus and turn it into glasses, which will ultimately turn into contacts, which will ultimately turn into implants into your brain slash eyes. And the metaverse wants to have you recreate your physical existence. So instead of being in a, a dingy pod and just live in a pod and put a tube in, or instead of being in a dingy warehouse, you can create your own reality, which is not good, and you don't want to give Facebook access to anything. Now, unfortunately, my list only goes to F, but if it went further than F, I would go further than F. This company is trash beyond belief. I hope that zero people use it. We need to let Mark Zuckerberg fail. That's the great thing about the capitalistic system, and then move on. Do not ever use anything, Mark Zuckerberg, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or anything. Now, if you use it for marketing, that's one thing. I know some people use it for business, and you can use all fake information. I've done the same thing for years. But as far as any personal real stuff, Facebook has literally admitted that they tie directly into the CIA and the NSA. Now, a lot of people say they're run by the CIA. No, they're not, but they were backed early by government, and they've got a deal, like all social media platforms, where they give their data willingly to the government, all of it, so they can catalog it and house it so it's not a conspiracy theory it's a fact it's just what they do now you take this on metaverse it's pretty low stakes when you've got pictures of you at dinner with your friends if you're in the metaverse and a company like mark zuckerberg and meta facebook has this that's the worst thing possible that is literally in-game type 
bad. So yeah, I mean, F and then, and then some, and I, this people need to rally around and make Mark Zuckerberg fail. Doesn't matter what he comes out with. His time is passed and you need to move on because while some of these companies are really bad, this one is horrible. The next one is Meta City, inspired by Minecraft. They did a free NFT launch to try to get things popping, to get things moving. Personally, not a fan. I don't like the direction they were going with this. I don't like Minecraft. I don't like these games. It's a big waste. Now, I will say this is better than some of these because if you can play a game, that's cool. If you can play a game and earn, that's cool. If you could do staking, that's cool. As long as it's anonymous, like it should be. It's like when you played video games when you're a kid, but it should not be you. So Meta City still kind of trying to get something going. I'll give them a D. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan. I'm, I don't want nothing to do with it. Uh, as long as it stays game, that is cool. But keep that in mind. One of the OGs is Decentraland, Mana, 2017. 2017, they have 90,601 limit on the land, 2.2 billion tokens, and you get voting rights. So, you know, this is going the direction that things should go. Now, I do have a few issues on the privacy front. I do have a few issues on being on the sizing, but with 2.2 billion tokens with the goal of voting with the goal of people having control of their quote unquote digital land. Now I'm going to be honest with you. This digital land thing is really stupid. It's just like buying land on the moon, running a business in the metaverse and having a shop in the metaverse. Kind of like if you have a website store or having a metaverse store, there's value in that for the future of e-commerce, the e-commerce next generation. There's value in some of these things, but the people who are getting in early on some of this stuff are going to be sorry because most of these metaverses are going to fail. And then you're going to spend obscene amounts of money on things that no longer exist. However, utilizing the metaverse and being able to utilize space in the metaverse to the customer base in the metaverse. But again, if it was truly decentralized, that wouldn't be the actual issue. And when they close source this and they govern this, most people are going to leave anyway. So that's the reason the internet itself works is because it's open and free. If the internet wasn't open and free, the entire internet would not work. We cannot have web 3.0 worse than web 2.0. Otherwise, there's no point in building. And that's the problem with a lot of these things. Decentraland is good, but it's not great. And I would say it's one of the best. But, you know, I have a lot of problems with these things in the metaverse. I'm going to go ahead and give Decentraland an A. Just because they've been around a long time and they have a goal and a mission utilizing them anonymously or investing in Decentraland. And I do need to, I would do want to preference that I, I am invested in Decentraland and Mana. So um, in the tokens, not this pointless land. Uh, I'm going to, ah, I think an A is a stretch, but I'm going to give them an A and I'm really being generous with that. But I think because they've been around and they kind of saw the vision, they've been around since 2017. They're not just a me too. The problem with most metaverse projects now is we're just, we're just going to have a gaggle of Me Too projects, and that's the problem. Most of them are never going to come to fruition. Most of them are going to be money grabs. Most of them are going to be tokens, and they're all going to be coming soon forever, and then they're never actually going to come. So that's the issue. MetaHero, 3D scanning and modeling. Do I need to say more? Turn your real life into an NFT. Absolute F. MetaHero is an F. I want nothing to do with that. That's garbage. MetaHero needs to fail. There's no good that's going to come from turning your real life. You do not want 3D scanning. You do not want 3D modeling. This is something... This is a CIA's wet dream. Could you imagine how stupid you would have to be to 3D scan and model yourself? Now, I've been 3D printing for a long time, and I know people who have 3D scan themselves so they can 3D print themselves or 3D print different things. Idiots, literal idiots. Like, this is not a good move. Do not use MetaHero ever. Do not put anything real in the metaverse ever. Not your real name, not your real address certainly not a 3D model of yourself and not even a 3D model of your own Rubik's Cube. Nothing you own, nothing you have, nothing about you. It should be a game. It should be fake. It should be an alias. It should be anonymous. It should be fun. It should have nothing to do with you. Do not do that. That is an absolute F. Blocktopia. Well, a little bit newer than some of these. Top investors in the gaming. Now, good things about Blocktopia is you actually can utilize platforms like KuCoin and some of these other anonymous to, to, to utilize Blocktopia coins. 3D creation. And, um, you know, when you look at their 3D creation engine, similar problems. Uh, you could do staking, which, again, 
they're suckering a lot of people in with the staking. And in the short term, you can make a lot of money staking. You can make a lot of money in DeFi. Will DeFi be here in a couple of years? We'll see. I hope so. I absolutely hope so. According to the United States government, no chance in hell. It'll probably be gone next year. And again, when I say gone, I mean illegal for you to do. And everyone says, well, the government can't do anything until they put out a law that says it's a felony to do DeFi, and then let's see how much you have to say. Now, if you were out there protesting, and see, the government doesn't think you care about crypto because you're lazy and you're not protesting. You're not being active. You're not putting together lists. And you're, not, you're, not, you're not at the doorstep of the Capitol saying, leave my crypto alone. So you got to be fair. Let's be honest, guys. The government does not think you give a crap about crypto because the crypto community is weak and they're quiet and they're scared and they're afraid and they don't do anything. You know, you get these, these social media scammers on crypto. Oh, BitBoy's got another big run on a crypto that he bought and then he's going to tell his audience and then he's going to sell it. Oh, wow. Well, instead of wasting your time with that crap and these other scammers, why don't you actually go out there and protect what you want your future to look like? But no, you're too lazy. So when crypto gets kicked in the teeth again and again, as it just did with the infrastructure bill, you got no one to blame but yourself. No one to blame but yourself. Blocktopia is a D, and that's a, that's a stretch. Uh, I think the structure, and I think there's some potential to buy Blocktopia through corporate structures like I talk about. Obviously, all my crypto is anonymous. When I help my clients with this, everything's anonymous. But if you're buying this kind of crap in your own name, you're insane. If you're buying crypto in your own name, you're insane, especially now with what's going on in Canada and Australia and all of Europe, 100% of Europe, and even some of the new uh, reports that came out in Russia. Like, you got to be kidding me right now. So you're being put in databases across the world. And these aren't government databases of your own country. These are world databases. So congratulations. And now people are willingly scanning themselves and everything they own and putting them in the databases. The intelligence agency cannot believe how easy their job is and how stupid the average person has become. Sandbox. Oh, sandbox is utility value. Obviously the land for sale, you know, the, the land and the estate. And it's one of the top coins. I've been investing in sandbox for a long time. It's probably the first crypto one I was invested in. And then of course it blew. And I, I was, I was in before it blew up with the, you know, when, when Mark Zuckerberg came out with that and, and metaverse stuff started really blowing up, I was already into sandbox because I already saw the utility. Again, I, I see the back end utility of these things. I don't see the front end fun. I think it's stupid. I'm not a big gamer, so maybe I don't see it, but then also I know where this is going. So to utilize it and to invest in it anonymously is one thing but to actually put yourself in it. I'm going to give it an A just because I feel like it is so incredibly important in the space. You might be asking, where's the S tier? There is no S tier. And to be honest with you, most of the A's and B's are this close to moving down to C's and D's because this is not going well, guys. Where you know, There's been a couple metaverses talking about privacy and I've been researching a few. And I'm going to do a dedicated video on privacy crypto because it is so small. So it's not just going to be banking or coins or metaverse. Like the privacy community, the, the, the hilarious thing, the, the irony of all of this is what crypto should be like the biggest sanction of the privacy community. The ironic thing is the privacy section of crypto is like a small offshoot. It's like a small hallway. It's like, oh, is that a bathroom? No, that's the privacy community. Then you've got this big, like, you know, 100,000 square foot warehouse full of all these centralized and all these scam coins and all these garbage coins and all these projects that are going nowhere and all these projects that are being regulated and a few good ones sprinkled in there as well. And then you got like a broom closet with the privacy tokens. That's the crazy thing about this. So there is a few potential things in the privacy world for the metaverse, but that's going to warrant its own video because I'm going to do some of the top privacy and some of the negative ones, some of the ones that pose as privacy coins, but they're not, which is really scary because people fall for this stuff and you think you're anonymous, you think you're secure, and you're literally out there as much as if you bought any other coin on Coinbase. Like it's actually pretty sad. So this is my list. Let me know what you think down below. What is your list? What would you add to this list? What would you take away? Would you give any of these a better score or a worse score? I know I was generous with a couple, but I felt like based on the metaverse as it is, Sandbox and Decentraland 
you know, are kind of doing the best they can. They're definitely not S tier. And really, if things don't go good soon, they're going to have to get bumped down because this is going into Mark Zuckerberg's vision. And instead of creating something for the people, you're going to see a lot of these companies try to focus on beating Mark. And that's not an option head to head if you're playing by the same set of rules because then you're just selling out the people like he's done his entire career. Anyway, guys, make sure you go on and everything you do. Uh, keep your privacy. Privacy is a right and it's a right that needs to be protected. And if you don't protect it and I don't protect it, you can bet that the big governments and the corporations will not protect it. They want to take your privacy because your privacy is your identity. Your identity is going to be hooked to your brand new social credit score. And the government is trying to tank crypto so they can usher in the Fed coin and basically take over your entire life. Sounds crazy, but look what's happened the last couple of years. This is just the tip of the iceberg. If you could see what's below the surface, your mind would be in shambles. Don't be scared. Don't live in fear. Live as a person who takes action day in and day out. Your voice matters. Your action matters. Do not ever, ever, ever surrender to these governments or these big corporations peacefully protest not violently peacefully go out there and get what you deserve and what you deserve is your privacy your freedom and to live a life with the pursuit of happiness and the pursuit of freedom in front of you and if you do not have that it is time to fight for that and the metaverse is not going to give you that the metaverse is going to make a lot of things substantially worse while i am hopeful about the metaverse, I am not optimistic about the metaverse because I see where this is going. I'm hoping a few companies step in and decide to be the pirate chain of the metaverse, decide to be the Monero of the metaverse, but we'll see. Doesn't look good. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to. I guess you could uh, also subscribe if you wanna see more videos in the privacy and privacy technology and digital security and how to become a ghost space. Just kind of making it up as I go. Uh, whatever space we're in today, uh, no, but this is our core mission at Privacy Action. We will continue the fight on the front lines always because the fact is if you lose your privacy and you subside to these digital and these social credit scores, at that point, is life even worth living? No, you become a slave to the system. It's already getting close, and it shocks me how many people are not taking action. Take action and go all in every day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.